Hello, Hi. dear participants, and we would like to welcome you at the event, which is very topical for the Kyrgyzstan economy, which is dedicated to transforming sustainability into new business opportunities. The event is organized by the RECP Center and the UN Environmental Program in the sustainable economy for transition to more inclusive sustainable economy in the Caucasus and uh, in financed by the UN Development Account. I am going to moderate this and I would like to bring you the best regards from the RACP Center. Regarding technical issues for this online event, you can find out more in our chat room and I am going to stop in more detail on some of these. We provide simultaneous interpretation, which you can take advantage of when you click a globe icon in the bottom toolbar. Please select the language you're most comfortable with. Also, we advise you to turn off your mic, mute your microphones unless you're speaking. If you have questions or comments, please use the chat room and at the end of the event, in the right time, you're going to get the answers to the questions or use the raise your hand gesture. We are also now recording this event in order to provide visibility and social networks. Also, we would like our speakers to adhere to the designated timelines. But first of all, we'd like to start with the official opening. Uh, we'd like to pass the word to Asel Isakova, the head methodologist of uh, state procurement for the Ministry of Finance of the Kyrgyzstan Republic. Hello and welcome to all of the uh, participants of the seminar. We'd like to thank all of the organizers of the seminar, uh, which aims to uh, raise awareness of SMEs in about sustainable state procurement. I'd like to say that I'd like to speak a little bit about how our state procurement department has been doing since 2019 under the UNDP program. Our department is implementing a number of sustainable procurement projects, and we are doing this within the framework of our commitments of uh, the Republic of Kyrgyzstan. Uh, which we have undertaken in the UN Sustainability Conference in 2012. This project is being implemented together with the NGO of Center of Development and Expansion of Export, which consults us. And at this time, we have implemented three stages of this project. At the first stage, we have done an overview of the current state of Kyrgyzstan uh, sustainable procurement. At the second stage, we have uh, considered the most high priority directions of state procurement of goods and services uh, with regard to the sustainable, uh, sustainable development principles. And for the prior, we defined LED lamps, uh, seedlings and plantlings and organic uh, organic fertilizers and uh, wastewater management facilities as high priority experts. But since we were struck uh, just like everyone by the COVID pandemic, we decided to add individual safety measures and disinfectants to the list of these high priority products. At the third stage, we have concentrated on developing technical specifications for these goods and services. And uh, based on the UNDP proposals, we did we made criteria for three products, which are LED lamps, uh, seedlings, and individual safety measures and disinfectants. Uh, all of the work uh, has been a part of the plan of action plan for green economy development in the Republic of Kyrgyzstan in 2019-2023 uh, uh, 2020, as approved by the government. In 2020, we have also made amendments into our state procurement law, which provides uh, 
the establishment of a set of unified technical characteristics and qualification requirements for frequently procured goods and services. This provision will allow to lower the barrier for implementing sustainable principles in procurement. And at the, uh, on the other hand, this is going to raise the level of accountability of uh, state bodies who will develop the state specifications. And at the same time, this would allow the vendors and the SMEs uh, to participate more easily in procurement procedures because they will already know the standard requirements to goods and uh, uh, and their qualifi and vendor qualifications this is how they can more transparently prepare themselves to participate and bid in procurement procedures and to approve this technical specification we have uh, elaborated a draft cabinet resolution uh, in order to demonstrate to all sta public stakeholders uh, and to acquaint them with uh, the new draft specifications for sustainability. We have held training for vendors and buyers in the training center of the Ministry of Finance. And this way we have gradually, as we are gradually moving Kyrgyzstan towards implementing more sustainable uh, procurement. And I hope that our first steps, these first steps will allow our manufacturers to become more in environmentally, economically, and socially sustainable. And it's also worth pointing out that right now we are working on elaborating leg uh, legislative acts where we're going to incorporate sustainability principles as much as possible. And we hope and endeavor to transition to full, fully sustainable state procurement. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, we'd like to pass the word to the program uh, officer of the UNAP program who has been uh, managing e the SSP program. Uh, Mr. Faradike, please. Thank you. So I was saying that Kyrgyzstan is an important country for UNEP. And you mentioned UNDP, but in reality it's UNEP. Because you're a regional front runner on FTP implementation under the leadership of the Minister of Finance and the active involvement of the Promotion and Development Center with the executing agency of our project. Kyrgyzstan is therefore joining the international movement towards FTP implementation in compliance with SDG target 12.7, the Sustainable Development Goals, and then its target 12.7, which aims to promote public procurement practices that are sustainable in accordance with national policies and priorities. This was voted in New York in 2015 by the General Assembly of the UN, and all the countries adopted the 17 development goals that will be that should be implemented by 2030 and within those goals you have a specific target you have 169 targets and one of the targets is about sustainable public procurement so Kyrgyzstan is complying with its uh, adherence its support to the sustainable development goals so as you know we have been supported Kyrgyzstan since 2019 I suppose and we really appreciate the dedication and commitment of the government of Kyrgyzstan towards SDG implementation. We're sure that Kyrgyzstan will soon join the group of countries that are compliant with SDG 12.71. And we did a monitoring exercise this year, and we found out that 33 countries in the world who represent 69% of global public procurement, were implementing SDG policies. From what I heard and what I see on the ground, I'm pretty confident that Kyrgyzstan will now 
in the next monitoring exercise will join this group of countries. The countries that are supporting FPT are committed to greening their public procurement, and public procurement represents an average 12% of the gross domestic product, and they are making thereby contribution, critical contribution to solving the three major crises that humanity is facing in climate, nature, and pollution. Total public procurement represents around 13 trillion US dollars. If we turn a little portion of this, such as 5%, 10%, 15%, 15% into green, we can have enormous transformative impact on market. And this is what the government of Kyrgyzstan is doing with LED lamps, seedlings, and disinfectants, as we heard. Taking advantage of the huge potential of public procurement means, however, engaging a thorough dialogue with the productive sector and in particular with SMEs. It also means, it also means signaling to the market well in advance the SVP orientations of the government to allow the market to adjust its production processes. It means aligning the industrial, fiscal and sustainability policies to synergize the impact. And it means raising the awareness of all the stakeholders and the challenges faced by Kyrgyzstan and the planet and on the international commitment of the country. I'm sure that this workshop will help to better understand and define the modalities of involvement of SMEs and the private sector in your future SDG policies. Be assured in any event that we remain on your side to help you progress on the path to sustainable public procurement. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to rep uh, to present the uh, RCP Center director. Uh, the RCP Center has been promoting the sustainability econo uh, economy uh, and sustainability of production. Thank you very much, Katerina. Uh, welcome. I'd like to welcome all of the uh, participants of the seminar, and I would like to thank all of. Uh, uh, participants from Kyrgyzstan and the Ministry of Finance, we see uh, the uh, effort of Kyrgyzstan towards uh, uh, sustainable development goals. And we, we see that there has been substantial work done uh, in the Sustainable Goals Action Plan until 2040. Uh, I think the sustainable state procurement is a very actionable tool uh, for uh, achieving sustainable development goals and the concerted effort of the Ministry of Finance, we believe will um, provide great help to the country. And we see the immense effort that has been made in the state procurement portal. And we see that uh, the amount of the sustainable procurements has been growing very steadily. We also, we would like to help the UN Environmental Program uh, for their long-standing support of our the countries of our region in our, on our path in a transition to sustainability and we'd like to say that the UNEPS program has been comprehensive we have institutional support functional uh, training support and also targeted help to SMEs as well as non-governmental and civil society organizations and in these in this project promoting uh, SSP and transition towards more inclusive greener economy uh, uh, in Central Europe, Asia, and uh, Caucasus countries, uh, financed by the UN Development Account, also provides uh, help to both state actors and enterprises. And the, uh, companies tend to be a little reactive, somewhat reactive in uh, adopting uh, these pioneering approaches. This is why we need to act in advance in order to increase the uh, competitiveness and sustainability of national vendors and manufacturers, even though this could be a challenge. But we believe this is totally possible. And on behalf of the RECP Center and our colleagues, we'd like to say that we are happy to apply our experience in the region uh, with uh, 
within this project. And in this seminar, we'd like to raise your awareness and inform you about the importance of uh, sustainable state procurement and to build your own potential as companies who would be capable to supply products and services which would comply with sustainability criteria. And besides the seminar, which uh, where we are going to answer your questions, we are going to, for, uh, to offer further help further free help uh, to select participants. This is free of charge, but this, this offer is limited to a certain number of participants. We would need to uh, review your uh, company's report and uh, your proposals, which would allow us to offer necessary training facilitate the development of your company to comply towards compliance with environmental and sustainable criteria which will open new markets for your companies both in kyrgyzstan and in the rest of the world we're going to provide you even more information within the seminar we hope you find this valuable interesting thank you andre and now uh, we are going to have a poll which is going to gauge the activity of our audience. Uh, please take a moment to answer these three questions. And we are a little bit behind schedule. This is why we are going to we're, we're going to ask you to answer these questions in three to four minutes. Uh, please don't hesitate to answer. And th these answers will uh, provide more clarity to the speakers on what aspects to give particular attention to. Thank you. All right, I think it's been ample time for you to make your choice and we would be happy now to share the results of the poll. So now we can see that all of our participants are concerned with the issues of circular economy, sustainable consumption and production, and resource efficiency in general. And regarding the concept of sustainability and, the, and which first steps towards sustainability have to be made by enterprises and companies, well, here I think we will need a little bit of help of our expert of the RACP Center of Johannes Fresner. So please help us answer these questions with more precision. I think we are all on the same picture now. Good afternoon from my side. I'm Johannes Fresner. Thank you, Katharina, for the uh, introduction. I'm a technical expert for the RACP Center in Kiev. We will discuss now sustainable public procurement as a modern approach to support a green economy. And I will try to focus within the small time frame uh, which we have uh, on what is in of small and medium-sized enterprises, especially. Farid was already very explicit on the importance of public procurement. Public authorities globally are major consumers. If they choose to purchase environmentally friendly products, this would be a huge step towards a green economy. And this sustainable public procurement uh, within the unit Pro program uh, is now uh, trying to lay out a structured systematic process uh, by which public authorities uh, can buy in an environmentally uh, sustainably uh, conscious way. I'm, I'm linking uh, to this already. Public procurement is a big market. Actually, globally speaking, it's the biggest market of its all. Of all. It's estimated at 13 trillion USD, which is quite something. 
in the European Union, it is estimated at 2 trillion. Regarding the Kyrgyz <coughs> public procurement market, uh, you are the experts, you know much more uh, than I do, but I'm, I'm sure it's, it's significant. It's an interesting market for SME. Uh, UNEP asked two years back, uh, globally, uh, governments, whether they have uh, SPP already in place. And 56 governments re responded uh, during this survey. And uh, I'm just uh, rushing now through some uh, very important results for us today. Uh, more than 90% of governments consider SPP as an uh, element of their policies 80% do have regulations in place. And if we look at the right hand side of, uh, right -hand side of the slide, uh, what are the main product categories we are talking about uh, for which public sustainable public procurement um, applies? Uh, this is IT, obviously, leading the pack. It's office equipment, it's, it's cars, it's cleaning and it's construction. So it's basically everything that is concerned. Now, the more interesting part probably is what governments globally apply in SPP. And here we see resource efficiency, which means making the best out of material resources, recycling materials, minimizing waste, uh, energy efficiency, and uh, reducing the use of hazardous materials as a major uh, criteria. I think this does not come as a surprise to you. Uh, looking at the results of the poll, uh, you have expected uh, something like this. Uh, to summarize, uh, this chart shows what uh, governments think about the future. And it's, it's clear from uh, the results to this survey that uh, the majority of governments think uh, that SPP will become even more important in the near future. Uh, <coughs> this means now, uh, Farid was speaking of aligning the economic model uh, companies are using with the big picture, which globally is proposed by governments. The, the following slide is trying to depict this. At present, we are following pretty much the a linear model of economy, which means to take something from the environment resources, raw materials, minerals, to make products, to distribute the products, use them, and then to discard them. It's quite obvious to all of us that this model is not sustainable. That's why we are promoting a different model it's called circular economy, in which ideally, there is very little extraction of materials from our planet. And there is ideally no waste by closing loops, by not using hazardous materials, by maximizing the efficiency of production, minimizing waste, by efficient use of energy, by using renewable energy sources, and by maximizing recycling internally uh, in between companies using uh, industrial symbiosis to the maximum, uh, but also by changing products and even business models so that sharing products, renting products has a bigger place in the future that products are repaired, remanufactured, refurbished. So ideally, a completely circular 
uh, model. This is the vision of our uh, future uh, economy. This is a huge uh, opportunity. And this is reflecting in uh, public procurement systems. Um, Eco-label products become more sought after. You see here the, the logos of, of three important uh, sustainable public procurement programs run by the city in Vienna, where I come from actually, the city of Berlin and um, also the, the logo of the Ukrainian SPP program and its platform. So at the same time, by following these guidelines, uh, we will uh, support greening uh, of our economy and we will support uh, policy uh, which try to combat climate change. And um, as a personal lesson learned working for companies in uh, establishing uh, products uh, according to eco design criteria and so on, usually this is also improving the financial efficiency of, of companies. So we have two directions, uh, two important um, elements. Um, to uh, monitor now more closely from an SME side, which is global eco-labeling. And in this slide, we have uh, a few of the existing eco-labels and it's up to us now, of course, to identify which ones of these are relevant. What is the market we are looking into? What are the, the relevant labels? And on the right-hand side, Organizationally speaking, we are talking about environmental management. We have here the logo of ISO 14000 um, of a, an international standard um, uh, giving us the elements of a functioning um, environmental management system. Now, as a, as a last slide, summarizing uh, from my side some advice. Um, the advice in a nutshell is let's start early. Let's start now to prepare, to prepare for eco-labeling, to prepare our products so that they contain uh, a minimum of, of hazardous materials that we uh, have intelligent uh, packaging, that we as an organization are resource efficient and energy efficient. And let's uh, prepare um, for uh, an environmental management system, which means to have an environmental policy in place, to have a team, uh, to have proceed based environmental impact of our organization and come up with a plan to mitigate it uh, and to prepare for uh, external auditing. The advice is to start now because to prepare products and to prepare the organization will take some time, uh, but it's well invested time. Um, it's an investment in our future and um, we will uh, be able to participate in a very interesting fast growing market. This was my uh, suggestion, my part. Thank you very much for your uh, attention and let me hand back to Katharina. Thank you very much, Johannes, for such a comprehensive answer. And uh, right now, that in order to understand what the readiness of Kyrgyzstan and its industry to implement uh, sustainable uh, procurement principles, uh, Mr. Kanyemetov, uh, the microphone goes to you. Thank you very much, Katerina. Uh, just like my colleague said, we have been implementing this project for a number of years and uh, 
um, the key steps within this project have been already mentioned by my colleagues, but I'd just like to add the last three steps uh, because all which we have developed, we have tried to approve uh, in the regular in a regulatory framework to fix them in a regulatory framework to fix all of the criteria uh, in our normative documents and the penultimate step is uh, to hold pilot procurements and seven is a raising awareness of sustainable state procurement and when we were doing the, an overview of the current situation, we have studied international experience in terms of how SSP was implemented uh, in uh, different countries. And there were some countries piloted it, some countries went for a full scale implementation from the outset. We, we also considered strategic priorities of implement, implementing sustainability principles. Uh, we also analyzed regulatory frameworks. We've uh, looked at who was more or less successful. Uh, a big plus for Ukraine is that they have joined the WTO uh, Treaty on State Procurement. We also analyzed the barriers which uh, existed in implementing these recommendations and when we proceeded to the prioritization stage we tried to consider international experience and we tried to understand what environmental safety and security is in terms of air water pollution uh, different uh, sorts and types of waste all, all types of consumption and quality standards various quality standards that exist in the world and another component of sustainability is as uh the economic uh, efficiency and uh life cycle product life cycle and we also considered such aspect as social justice um we of course, prioritize creating jobs and promoting domestic manufacturing. The prioritization method is, is a quite sophisticated mathematical formula, which is based on the uh, UNEP uh, environmental program method, which takes into account all kinds of metrics and it provides a weighted calculation in order to prioritize the products and criteria on the state procurement portal and the final part of this assessment we have seen the product we have prioritized the product categories you can see them in green these are the LED lamps, uh, local seedlings and saplings and uh, services for wastewater management and other things. And uh, personal, personal protection equipment. So as you see, we have developed technical specifications for these priority products such as seedlings and saplings, uh, LED lamps and personal protection equipment and disinfectants. And there's a wide selection of products that go in there, starting with face covers and masks uh, up to disinfectants and uh, others. As we develop these technical specifications, our first pilot project was discussed with the manufacturers themselves we always start by discussing with manufacturers of seedlings and saplings, for example, and we heard their feedback, we heard their comments into these recommendations so that we could adapt our recommendations to the ways that suit and benefit them.
And as a result of uh, this work, we have developed a set of guidelines on developing specifications. We have developed it in uh, the Russian and Kyrgyz languages because our buyers usually speak Kyrgyz in the throughout the region. And these guidelines have been distributed through the Ministry of Finance's training center. And we have held a number of training seminars uh, for buyers and vendors, and there's been great feedback, which we have also taken into consideration. As a result of this, we wanted to fix all of this in our legislation and regulatory framework. And we have thus developed a draft cabinet resolution which approves a list of specifications for these pilot goods that I just mentioned. Also, we are approving the methods and prioritization criteria, uh, which is based on the UNEP prog uh, programs method. And we all are also approved. We have also approved the guidelines for developing technical specifications for goods and services uh, procured through uh, SPP, SSP. And then we are starting to work towards in, uh, towards improving the sustainability of uh, procure, state procurement. And uh, for many of the building codes, many of our building codes are very obsolete and they reflect old construction methods uh, elaborated back in the Soviet Union. And they also reflect old standards and environmental requirements. This is something that we strive to improve. Besides, where, as we discuss this with many buying organizations, clients. We have a anti-corruption policy. We, and for anti-corruption audits, usually the auditors look at the upfront cost and they thus ignore the life cycle cost. And then sometimes the companies, the buyers who would buy something that is more expensive upfront, but will save overall on the life cycle cost, that would get penalized by auditors. But we're trying to change that towards uh, a different model. Besides, we, we have uh, requested the National Statistics Committee together with the uh, state procurement uh, department to monitor the process of processes of implementation of sustainable state procurement. And for three years in a row, we have been measuring our compliance with sustainable development goals, some of which concern various components of sustainability. And then it says here that all of the authorized state authorities need to you uh, are required to use our outcomes and developments in their further work. And this is what the cabinet resolution says, but within as as we have to write to in to implement these sustainability principles we have encountered an unsustainable political environment we have had five prime ministers come and go and three directors of state procurement department come and go in the ministry of finance uh, so we had to explain everything from scratch but we hope to introduce these changes in legislative documents, in legislative acts, and we hope that this is going to make them more politically sustainable. 
You know, many uh, procuring organizations, uh, we could, many, org, many organizations are saying that there has been some stalling of progress at the state level. And this is why we started working with the procuring organizations directly. Uh, we know that uh, most of the public organizations rent the building uh, from the uh, uh, from a relevant government organization who operates the buildings, and this organization will procure all of the lamps, etc. And they were very happy to find the new specifications for LED lamps, and uh, we also. Um, met with the first vice prime minister and with the representatives of Bishkek Electrical Company. And we are working with them in order to develop pilot documentation in order to uh, bring these standards into implementation. We have also uh, had conversations with uh, seven state hospitals so yeah, we are increasing this set of companies that we collaborate with. We have also uh, hired a PR and outreach specialist. And we are now going to release three socially oriented videos. One is dedicated to seedlings, one is to power save, and one is dedicated to personal protection equipment and disinfectants. And we went to manufacturers of, let's say, uh, LED lamps and many stakeholders. Uh, are very happy with this. So we have already finished, finalized two videos and one is right now in editing. So this is our experience. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I hope that you stay active after our first poll. And right now we are going to ask our participants, uh, what is your readiness to implement sustainable state procurement and resource effectiveness. So you have a poll with three more questions and the timing remains the same. Thank you very much. All right. I think everyone who wanted to answer and help us know more about your needs has already taken this opportunity. So now let's see the results. So, what can we say? First of all, the questionnaire shows that you're overall interested in implementing SPP to go into national and global and regional markets. We see that you believe that it will increase your competitiveness. And we see that some participants are have already made the first steps towards ref, more resource effective production. And this means that there is significant potential of the industrial sector of Kyrgyzstan. And uh, it looks like practically every one of you is uh, interested in increasing environmental indicators of your production. And of course, all of these answers show that this seminar is very relevant for SMEs in Kyrgyzstan. And we see that only, only 8% of those present who represent in the industry have eco-labeling certificates. And just like Johannes mentioned in his report, it is eco-labeling that is a very valuable tool for to of moving towards uh, more production. 
which is better production. And uh, Ivan Emilchuk uh, from the RCP Center is going to elaborate. Thank you very much, Ekaterina, for a very interesting uh, introduction. Of course, eco-labeling is very important, but uh, it's very important to understand the aspects of sustainable development and we adapt our production of our goods and rendering of services not only to just receive uh, uh, equal labeling as a goal in itself but our goal is rather to become more environmentally oriented economically efficient and socially just so i'm going to turn on my presentation and i'm very very happy uh, to participate and i'd like to thank mr kubat for uh, giving us this backgrounder on uh, the national experience of implementing sustainable procurement in Kyrgyzstan. And in, uh, from myself, I'd like to dedicate this presentation to the business aspect of why this is beneficial, why this could be interesting, and uh, whether or not they have they are worth being implemented in from the business perspective first of all i'd like to start with sustainable development we have already uh, discussed that it, uh, it sustainable develop sustainable production consists of environmental uh environmental compliance economic efficiency and social justice but we at the same time we need to understand that each company each business uh, provide has a footprint in our reality and this footprint can be positive or negative and as an example let's consider a company that produces pharmaceuticals positively uh, its positive impact is that it produces medicines that help remedy diseases but negative uh the negative impact could lie in uh wastewater air pollution etc and sustainable development goals uh, mandate us to reach a balance of positive and negative impacts and this is achievable through a number of tools which can be external or external in their nature and internal tools can uh, can be such things as the concept of resource effective and cleaner production uh, which presupposes modernization of uh, production processes, increases energy efficiency, develops social policies of your company, etc. But the, the external tools could be such things as sustainable public procurement. And talking about, about sustainable state procurement, this we need to say that this story is not does not only concern public procurement we know a number of examples when sustainable procurement is being used in b2b uh, we know that uh, we have several client companies who are uh, vendors to one of uh, major french brands and this the, comp the parent company of this brand have developed a sustainable development strategy towards 2030 and where they have declared such goals as uh, curbing CO2 emissions, uh, reducing uh, waste formation, some social policies, etc. And now these goals are broadcast all the way through the value chain because they uh, they trace all of the vendors in the value chain uh, by uh, environmental, social, and economic aspect if they want to, and they need to comply with that in order to supply to this major company. And I think that this is becoming a uh, more and more popular in such areas as retail and others. But let's turn our attention towards B2G. Today, we're going to talk more about uh, sustainable public procurement and the green public procurement. And today, we're going to find out about what the life cycle of a product is and how to uh, run the, these evaluations. Uh, we will consider price and non-price criteria, and then we will also consider several types of eco-labeling. 
before we go there, I'd like to pay some attention to one of the key stakeholders, which is society at large. And of course, the society at large is represented by the consumers. Talking about consumers, I'd like to draw your attention towards several marketing studies. And here's the longitudinal 20 year long study. And we see that consumers, consumers are spending more on more sustainable products. Uh, food is, of course, leading this, but also uh, household electronics, uh, household chemicals, lamps and illumination, uh, as well as transport. This could be not only battery EVs, but uh, this could uh, be something like car sharing models in the economy. Uh, we also see philanthropy because uh, sustainable development also presupposes a social component, but unfortunately, this has changed insignificantly. Uh, here's what the consumers expect from business. And if we do an outline of this research, we can see that very often and by large, the consumers would carry the responsibility for sustainability over to business because they believe that business should be more, should treat sustainability more seriously. At the same time, the study demonstrates that over 40% are ready to pay for more sustainable and environmentally friendly goods and services. And next study is also quite interesting because it uh, it also demonstrates that uh, biz businesses face higher expectations than consumers. We see that 78% of consumers believe that business can be sustainable and make money at the same time. And another interesting indicator is that 74% of uh, respondents believe that business has to be proactive, not reactive to governmental regulations and mandates. So we see that from the previous speakers that the law of Kyrgyzstan provides a, a range for implementing the sustainable component. But we'd like to point out to the business that says that consumers are ready and uh, they expect the businesses to act proactively. And what is, what is businesses' reaction? 98% of companies claim that they're implementing sustainable development principles. And what's very important is that 74% believe that implementing sustainable development initiatives actually benefit their financial bottom line. And how we can sum this up, we see that people and consumers have started to spend more with companies uh, who offer sustainably develop, uh, sustainably manufactured goods and services. Uh, also, consumers believe that businesses have to change regardless of legislative and governmental mandate. And also, businesses themselves claim that this is quite interesting and beneficial to their financial bottom line. And here is a number of factors for selecting sustainable vendors. And if you're a vendor, you can use this for self-assessment. You can also use them. If you're a buyer, you can use these factors to select vendors for your own procurement procedures. First is operational costs. So that is water, energy, etc. But let's continue to indirect costs. For example, if you if your equipment is energy and efficient your air conditioning system for example will have to work more 
and spend more energy again. Then such things as fair and just work conditions. We see uh, equipment. We see that the prices for uh, energy are increasing. And you can see that if you even procure more expensive but more energy effective equipment, you will see that the uh, you will in the long run you will actually save funds. The next three factors will consider uh, circular economy principles, and this is the usage of repaired parts and mechanisms and then costs of incident management etc but if you have a large enough base of vendor base you can set minimal standards for goods but if the vendor base is small you can create stimuli for them to uh, raise up to rise up to these criteria uh, also an interesting factor is uh, uh, introducing environmental provisions in the contract, such as using certificates or the mandate to return packaging, etc. If we talk about assessment criteria, Mr. Kubat has already mentioned pricing criteria when we under sometimes understand that a low cost, a low upfront cost as a criterion leads us to a situation when we get low quality products. And there are things such, there are additional criteria such as life cycle cost or life cycle cost plus other criteria. If we talk about the product life cycle, this concept includes a segmentation of the product life cycle into several stages, such as its production, its logistics, its use, and then its further its further fate after it has been after its use has been completed. But here we have the key stages of the product life cycle, such as uh, resource extraction, the manufacture, then product, uh, then logistics and distribution, and then use. And I have mentioned the positive and negative footprints of the company's operations. Uh, it is segmentation by product life cycle that allows to care to have a very good assessment. For example, if we talk about resource extraction, how we can look at how the resources extracted, whether they're renewable, whether they can even theoretically be renewed. Uh, what about manufacturing? Manu uh, what kind of equipment was used? What kind of waste and wastewater and air pollution has been generated? And uh, I'd like to say that each of these elements can be assessed through the sustainable triad, which we, ha which we have talked about, which is the economic, environmental, and social aspects. Let's see how this works, for example, for logistics and transportation and distribution. The economic component is that the longer the logistics, um, logistical route, the more you end up paying at uh, environmental co uh, component, the longer the range, the more fuel is used, the more uh, emissions uh, exist and the more aggressive the environmental footprint is. Uh, your, of course, your logistics has to be calculated in such a way that does not significantly harm local population so that you don't cause discomfort through noise and vibration because vibration would also damage infrastructure. If we talk about reuse of products, whether reuse and co-use uh, 
is possible, whether your equipment is repairable, et cetera, et cetera. I'd also like to draw your attention to the fact that the life cycle concept uh, is vital for uh, eco-labeling and eco-certification. What other components exist for life cycle uh, calculation? Uh, in order to make your procurement more sustainable, you can consider uh, upfront costs, transportation costs, installation costs, uh, disposal cost, remaining value, balance value, like a resale value, and costs for ancillary services such as external environmental considerations such as emissions taxes, environmental taxes, transportation taxes, etc. And here's an example of life cycle value calculation. Since lamps are a priority goods in Kyrgyzstan, like our colleagues have just said, uh, let's consider how this tool can be used to uh, gauge different procurements. And let's say we have four brands and if we were to calculate exclusively by the price criterion, the winning brand would be number two. But if you look at life cycle costs, we need to consider its technical characteristics, such as the generation of life streams and also energy expenditure. And then we would denominate each brand by cost by a thousand loom and we would calculate how much is uh, paid for generating the same live stream. We are also calculating the product life cycle length. We also consider electrical energy. And we calculate all of these costs and then we add that to the cost of the goods. And this is where you can see that the priority changes significantly. And we see that the brand number three actually provides a lower life cycle cost. We can also use a tool called the non-price criteria matrix. This is a very simplified example. It can contain many more, much more criteria. Now let's say that the first column is the characteristic of the criterion, efficiency and quality. And you'll see that there are criteria concerning safety and environmental footprint. For example, here are the indicators. We say that re there are that the product needs to contain recycled materials and to prove that uh, there are certain certificates and there are certain standards to be adhered and this matrix for example if we procure paper why do we want this paper is be our justification is that a certain amount of wood is used to produce uh, a pack of A4 paper, and we'd like to reduce this amount of wood and thus decrease our environmental footprint. And the confirmation could be the declara a declaration in compliance with I ISO 14,021. And let's say a target indicator could be no less than 75%. And the same for our quality. This could be if efficiency class, these could be qualitative characteristics. And the reason why is because we are orienting towards price. Uh, we are also interested here in a certificate, which would confirm that the quality is compliant to class C plus. 
talking about safety, uh, we consider only one element, uh, just for argument's sake, it's chlorine. And this could be derived from uh, the tech, uh, from the conditions of manufacture, because chlorine is an aggressive and active chemical uh, reagent. And our target indicator is no chlorine used within production. The next criterion is environmental measures, environmental protection measures, such as the, let's say, woodland and forest man uh, responsibly managed forest. And this is a, uh, the justification here is that the certification guarantees uh, legal compliance with uh, social and environmental standards during the production and supply of this resource. And also we see how this is confirmed by the certifi uh, what certification is necessary and how compliance can be demonstrated. And then there are additional green criteria which you can rely on. For example, you could refer to the green public procurement uh, website for Europe and those are those pr types of procurement are segmented by product types and these could can include paper and detergents and uh, electronics uh, and each of these elements includes two documents uh, first of all the technical report and also the list of criteria and these criteria are broken down into two levels uh, which is a more simple level and a more comprehensive level so if you want to procure this or that type of goods at this stage you can refer to these criteria as well talking about eco-labeling and as we know eco-labeling is a graphical uh, representation of certain environmental attributes of the goods in question and eco-labeling is useful for consumers to find out more about environmental characteristics and also to distinguish but between compliant and non-compliant products and as we're going to find out later we we will see that companies can also mark their goods with certain environmental criteria let's start with equal uh, the first type eco labeling and what uh, what we need to know about that is that it's voluntary in nature. Uh, this eco labeling requires certification by an independent accredited entity. And this type one eco labeling is done based on the environment, uh, life cycle, product life cycle assessment. Uh, there's also a global eco-labeling network, which includes 26 programs and 50 nations of the world. Unfortunately, in Kyrgyzstan, there appears to be no organization that is represented by this network. But at the same time, we need to understand that during procurement, you do not have to you do not have to require any particular type one eco label. So you can actually go for any eco label. Ivan, sorry. Uh, you still have uh, maybe five minutes to, to finish up. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to finish. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me about time. Uh, uh, there's a special group of labels. 
this is done not based on uh, life cycle management but on uh, things such as energy consumption or maybe with uh, textile this could be uh, a limitation of using certain chemicals and textile production and with the forestry council this is their certification that has been maintained uh, if we're talking about environmental declarations of the second type these are not provided by uh, and not confirmed by certification organization these are self-declared such as uh, aluminum and uh, different la plastic labels uh, for example that this packaging is this uh, that this packaging is made of PET and then there are type three environmental declarations and these are there's more detailed information based on environmental indicators this could be for example the specific energy used for a unit of product or environmental footprint etc and here the consumer can study it on their own there's all there are also special groups of environmental uh, labels uh, such as fair trade when uh, uh, the origin of the products is is controlled especially if we're talking about products originating from developing countries or for example the rainforest alliance which which deals with promoting sustainable agriculture in rainforest areas uh, then each of these certifications is catalogized and if you want to buy this or that type of goods you can go into the system uh the certification system and, and you can see which of the manufacturers actually correspond to these criteria and very uh, briefly about implementation strategy there are three elements you can start with self-declarations but but of course the authority of self-declarations is not very high but then you get expert evaluation to do an external audit of your compliance with this or that component for example you can come to our center and we will be happy to help you and there's also an independent certification which is done by an accredited certified organization which and you get this eco label of the first the first type eco label uh, so thank you very much for your attention that's it for me and i would like to pass the floor to the next speaker thank you very much Yvonne. Uh, now that we know everything about sustainable public procurement what can the companies do andre valfalmiev director of the RCP center can you tell us about a free expert support to promote smes uh, smes sustainability in public procurement thank you very much i'd like to say that my presentation provides time for answering your questions we can do it either during the presentation through the chat room or by voice uh in the end of the presentation we will be happy to answer your questions if such do exist so about our next steps uh, if we're talking about supporting companies of course we have worked extensively with states and public authorities to uh, ensure more sustainable procurement but we also need to prepare companies and enterprises and of course doing everything is impossible in one and a half hours but this is why we're offering to do this directly with companies to prepare them for this future just a couple of words about our Prada project and within which we're going to offer this consulting service it's called increasing uh, in promoting sustainable procurement in this region and it's it's 
financed by UNDP and uh, implemented uh, and coordinated by UNEP. Our center is an implementing uh, entity, and we have two components, one of which is not only about uh, sustainable procurement, but also about the platform of resource efficiency, uh, resource to fish, uh, the, the platform IBO, which is going to be launched by UNEP uh, in, in the next year. And we're going to look for stakeholders, uh, such as companies and associations, which will help us develop this platform and it will allow companies to self-assess their state in terms of resource efficiency and this is very very important uh, as you can see from this slide our center has been created in 2013 in order to popularize resource effective and cleaner production and uh, within this time we have worked with over 170 companies and here you see the results of our of the measures that we have implemented. We have consulted companies. We have given them a list of recommendations uh, to introduce. They have introduced these uh, measures and uh, they have had this yearly effect. I think the potential is pro and the capacity is maybe four to five times more, but not everything of, uh, unfortunately is being implemented. And as we consider how the companies transform their resource, their use of resources into their end product. In order to make our goal is to maintain the quality and the cost efficiency of the product while improving its environmental indicators. But in this consult uh, consultation, we are going to focus not on resource efficiency, but rather on the sustainability of the company and its products and services to compliance with uh, sustainability criteria so that these uh, products and services can participate in sustainable public procurement. Uh, within this consult consultation, our experts together with the experts of the company are going to collaborate on a number of aspects. Cons uh, this will consider both uh, environmental, env economic, and so social factors. Uh, all of this work is going to be uh, split into several stages. First, we're going to collect the applications. Then we are going to contact the selected companies. For Kyrgyzstan, we have 10 spots which we can offer. We have to also develop the questionnaire, which is going to demonstrate basically where the company falls in these in this coordinates of sustainable production first we're going to uh, distribute this questionnaire then we're going to collect answers then together with the experts we're going to analyze them and prepare a report and the second part is going to concern the products for each company each company has sustainable procurement criteria in Kyrgyzstan, or maybe we can take uh, other countries which could be interested, such as Russia or Europe, and we're going to superimpose these sustainability criteria on your product. And we're going to test whether your product is going to comply with the requirements that are already in place as of now. And as we, uh, and when we talk about this work and its result, we know that the company will receive a report uh, on the company's status and recommendations as to what to do in order to be eligible for sustainable procurement. We're also going to help you elaborate on an action plan on what to introduce and when we will help you find contacts in your country or in your region and organizations which will help you pass certification or introduce an energy management or environmental management uh, system. Uh, based on the polls, we see that very few companies have such a system in place. But it looks like almost all companies have elaborated uh, a development plan and co most companies have sustainable development goals. And because those are often overlooked, but even when this plan is in place, this speaks, this speaks volumes on the sustainability of the company. 
uh, the length of this assessment is going to be under a month. We will endeavor to finish by New Year's Day, but and the experts are going to be involved from our center, as well as international experts with uh, more experience in this sphere. But due to COVID-19 and the limitations in place, we're going to carry out the entire assessment uh, remotely. There's just going to be a questionnaire and then uh, live communication online through any platform convenient to you. And as we work with companies, we know that a part of uh, the information is confidential, which we are going to protect through confidentiality agreement. We're not going to collect. Uh, we're not going to collect some types of confidential information, for example, energy use. We will not ask you how much energy do you consume, but we will say, do you account for, do you account for how much energy you consume? So we will make, we will do everything to uh, ensure that your company feels safe to share this information with us. Uh, you can, uh, to participate, you can talk to either Ivana Milchuk or Chingiz Junushev. We also ask you to fill in an online form so that we can contact you and tell you about our next steps. And this basically concludes my presentation. And if you have questions, I would like to answer them. Can I ask a question? Thank you for a good presentation. Very interesting presentation. One thing about your contact data, we can you distribute the presentation so that we get your contact data so that we can contact. And you said that uh, the assessment will take up to a month. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And here I'd like to elaborate a little more of course, we're going to distribute all the information to all the participants. We're also, of course, going to promote the, these companies through our national par and international partners. But all, all companies, all eligible companies will receive uh, uh, invitations to this assessment. Regarding the time frame of this assessment, uh, a month is quite conservative because actually this could be done much faster, but this is there's a question of communication, and we know our previous experience of communicating with companies, and we know that, uh, especially SMEs, they don't have that much time, and they have their own working schedule. So we need to find this opportunity for interviews, maybe dedicate 30 or 40 minutes to go through the questionnaire. And, and I think the company needs to allocate some resource to just answering these questions to the best of their ability. So in net time, it's going to be much less, but considering the communication overhead, uh, we allocate up to a month because even the first contact would require up to a week of preparation considering especially considering the time zone differences you also said that for kyrgyzstan there are only 10 companies right yes that is correct 10 spots are reserved for kyrgyzstan and for are you talking about the partic those participating in the seminar or there are some different criteria kubat has provided us a report on the previous works. Uh, but as we can see, some target sectors have been identified and we're going to prioritize them. And of course, for the companies who participate in the seminar, they have a more conscious choice. But nevertheless, we invite all companies to participate. If you have any further questions, you can send them to any of our contacts and we're going to answer you by email. And I hope for uh, fruitful cooperation. So Katerina, I'd like, we'd like to continue. Uh, I'd like to say that you can fill in 
an application form for free consultation support. Uh, there is another link to it in the chat room and you're going to part and of course based on uh, how how many participants we get we're going to select uh, a certain number of companies so in order now in order to conclude this event i'd like to pass the word to lesa nikolaeva thank you very much ekaterina hi everyone i'd like to thank and welcome all of you here who participated on the seminar to all of our colleagues from kyrgyzstan the representatives of the ministry uh, the representatives of the small medium enterprises our experts our partners i'd like to thank our uh, our speakers uh, my colleague from UNEP for such an interesting seminar and indeed within three years we have held a number of similar discussions and it is today that we wanted to collect as much information which would be as valuable to our businesses as possible. Kyrgyzstan is not a big country and it's a developing country but as we have heard from the speech of Kyrgyzstani president in Glasgow, he has accented atten his drawn attention to the climate change problems. And he stresses the need for cleaner development of the economy, which would enable us to maintain Kyrgyzstan's unique nature, to maintain the glaciers of Kyrgyzstan, and but at the same develop the economic sectors and a cleaner direction, so that even the post-COVID recovery still considers the climate and the economy so that the economy could adapt to produce cleaner products and render cleaner services also the president of the republic of kyrgyzstan has called the international community and the international investors to work collectively with uh, national companies and local companies to participate in investment products uh, projects that would benefit the green economy. We know that more and more attention is globally paid to uh, greener and environmentally cleaner production. And if we are talking about the ambitious goal uh, voiced by the president and uh, enshrined in strategic documents such as the national 2026 development program which is a part of the more strategic document of development up to 2040 uh, we see that the companies and the businesses of kyrgyzstan need to be mindful of these new opportunities new international standards new innovative approaches because otherwise we're going to have a harder time in inviting international investors and entering the international market uh, and uh, harder to promote our products towards a more environmentally friendly market talking about state public procurement we need to understand the its relationship to other processes in uh, the country and the role of companies remains crucial because they remain either to be either producers or importers of goods and services and the state by mandating certain environmental criteria and by promoting sustainable procurement, the state can lead the way 
and motivate businesses towards cleaner production. And at this, I'd like to wrap up my presentation. I'd once again, I'd like to thank uh, our organizers, our interpreters, and say that unfortunately, our project is going to wrap up in this year. And on December 2nd, we are going to hold the second regional seminar for pan European, uh, the pan European region. And I am happy to invite all of you to participate in this seminar. And I'm going to send you more information about this uh, later. And we're going to discuss the issues of progress for eco labeling and uh, eco labeling for uh, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. Thank you very much to all organizers and participants. All the best to you. Thank you very much, Lesa. At this, we would like to call this event to adjourn. We hope that this event opens new horizons for the manufacturers of the Republic of Kyrgyzstan. Thank you for participating and until we meet again.